Hello and welcome back everyone to another PKHS Ideas Shorts video which is the seventh one in the whole season and the sixth one for this year. And so today what we'll be looking at is a game between Stefan Levitsky and Frank James Marshall. Now if you don't know something about Frank Marshall it is that he was one of the oldest chess players that America has ever produced. He had made a chess club in America and to be playing in that chess club is said to have been as if all the great players of the past that America has created and everyone who has played in that chess club has their eyes bearing down upon your game. A good analogy at playing at this chess club is probably saying about the Olympics held back in Athens or the Ashes being played at Lords in England where cricket actually originated. So before I gone with the moves of this game. This game was played in 1912 in the Congress DSB number 18. So now we go back to the game. The game started off with move number one e4 and after e4 black replied with e6. So now we see after d4 and d5 that it is in fact the French defense. After which Stepan Levitsky replied with knight c3, Marshall replied with c5, knight f3, knight c6, e takes d5, e takes d5, and bishop to e2. Now here in this position I would like to point out that white is better. The engine gives out slight advantage for white. But in this position it was actually a clear advantage for white, which means that Stepan Levitsky actually missed a move to be played here. And the move was bishop to b5. Now what bishop to b5 does here in this position is that it pins the knight to the king and since black has no defenders on the knight at the moment except for this pawn over here it means that if for instance white plays something like this this knight is going to go this pawn is going to go and this rook is under attack and so after bishop b5 knight f6 is played after which castles white protecting the king c takes d4 is a good move here knight takes d4 bishop d7 trying to again guard this knight and after which rook e1 is the best move in this position bishop e7 now bishop takes e6 b takes e6 queen e2 king f8 and bishop f4 but still in this position the position is absolutely horrible for frank marshall the only advantage that he has in this position is the fact that he has only developed three pieces and he has the advantage of the two bishops the bad things about this position are a he has three pawn islands over here b he has not developed his queen the two rooks and c he has not castled yet so therefore you could say Levitsky actually had a chance to win this game in move number six if he had played bishop to b5 so now we go back after bishop to e2 marshall played knight f6 castles bishop e7 bishop g5 black castles d takes c5, bishop e6, and knight to d4. I would like to tell you once again, this position was slightly advantageous towards Stepan Levitsky. Now, the only problem was that he had actually played knight to d4. In this position, one move earlier, it was actually still a clear advantage for white. So, what white should have played was something like bishop to e3. What bishop to e3 does, guards this pawn and stops black pawn from going to d4 and so knight e4 is black's best move in this position knight takes e4 d takes e4 now as you can see if needed the queens can take each other and knight d4 is the best move knight takes d4 queen takes d4 queen takes d4 bishop takes d4 as you can see this is quite an equal game so after a5 and f3 it is quite equal but the only thing is that white has the positional advantage and by the positional advantage what I mean is he has the majority of pawns over black's minority of pawns what it does is that it stops the pawn from going over to b4 and protecting the c5 pawn and so we see that this position is slightly advantageous for white but positionally it's quite playable for both sides However, what Levitsky played was a worse move which soon led to the deterioration of this position. I can tell you after bishop takes c5, this position is now probably equal. 
knight takes e6, f takes e6, bishop g4, queen d6. This position here is slightly advantageous for black. Alright, so after queen d6, white actually played bishop to h3. Now here in this position, I want to appreciate the fact that white's pieces are absolutely everywhere. For example, his bishop is over here, his other bishop is over here, knight is over here, and his rook is doing absolutely nothing over here. However, in black's position, he has nearly developed all of his pieces. And as you can see here, his main pieces are kind of around the center and have one common goal of trying to push past these pawns. And so what black played now is develop his last piece, rook a to e8, after which white played queen d2 and black played bishop to b4. Well, here once again you see the fact that the pieces are everywhere. Black's pieces are very much coordinated but white's pieces are not that much coordinated at all. So bishop takes f6 happened and rook takes f6, rook a d1, queen c5, queen e2, bishop takes e3, b takes e3. Now here in this position we see the number of pawn islands. White has three pawn islands and black has three pawn islands as well. However, if we recall to the start of the game where white only had two pawn islands, that was much advantageous for white positionally. So therefore we can say that white from the starting position has gradually got worse and worse in terms of pawn structure and piece placement. So in this position, black played queen takes e3, white played rook takes d5, here as you can see e takes d5 is not possible because of queen takes e8, rook f8. Now what I want you to do is find force checkmate in 2. Okay, so if you found it, the move is bishop to e6 check, after which black plays king h8 and queen takes f8 delivers the final blow. So that is why e takes d5 is not possible. Therefore, what Frank Marshall played was that he played knight to d4. After knight d4, white played queen to h5. However, even in this position after knight to d4, Levitsky still had a chance to try and equalize the game and not lose straight away. So the move that he had to play is queen to e4. What queen to e4 does, it still keeps the pressure on the rook on e8 so that the pawn on e6 cannot take the rook on d5. So rook f4 is the best move for black. Queen e6 and h6. This position is still slightly advantageous for black. However, white is not losing in this position. So now we go back to queen h5. In this position I can tell you white is completely lost due to a combination of forcing moves which lead to the white's loss. What I want you to do is to try and find this combination. Alright, so the start of this combination is not very simple. The first move is rook e to f8. What rook e to f8 does is that firstly it doubles up the rooks and also attacks the rook over here. And what this actually is called is called the principle of two weaknesses where these two rooks are attacking right here which is defended by the king and the rook which is one weakness and the second weakness is over here where the rook is attacked. So therefore what happens is rook to e5 was played, rook h6, queen to g5. Now what I want you to do is find the best move in this position. Okay, so have you found it? The move is rook takes h3. Notice that if g takes h3, a beautiful knight f3 comes. This is a family fork, a good example of what a knight can do in these types of positions where there are holes all over the position and that the pieces are placed exactly where the knight wants them to be. Therefore, rook c5 was played. And the final move, what I want you to do is try and guess this final move. It is an absolute thriller. Whatever white does, he is going to lose. After this move, Levitsky had to resign. Okay, so the move is queen to g3. It's an amazing move, isn't it? The fact that white cannot play queen takes g3 because of knight u2 check, king h1, knight takes g3. In this position, f takes g3 is not possible because of rook f1 checkmate. And so, king g1 is forced, knight e2, king h1, and rook c3. After which, white has to take the rook on c3, otherwise his pawn on c2 will be gone, and his pawn on a2 will be gone as well. 
so therefore this is quite a nice game after rook takes c3, knight takes c3 we can see how powerful the knight is in this position and the rook is coming in to aid the knight in the next two or three moves notice here the rook on f1 cannot absolutely move anywhere because the pawn on f2 is not guarded the best chance that white has in this position is to play king g1 guard the f2 pawn and move his rook out of the way so now we go back to the move after queen to g3 after queen g3 h takes g3 was also possible if you saw but what leads is a knight e2 checkmate a really nice checkmate where the rook is stopping the king's escape and the knight is delivering the final blow and the same case is possible after f takes g3 knight e2 king h1 and rook takes f1 checkmate as well and what you can see in this game and in fact what you should see in this game is that during the very start over here after bishop to e2 this position was a clear advantage for white and so from a clear advantage to white you went to a completely destroyed position for white and a plus for black and so um, the lesson to learn here is that do not overlook the position and do not dismiss the opponent's threats and also what you have to do is to never give up in a chess game because your position can turn around from being a loss to a win so therefore if you like that please go down to the comments section below and ask any questions that you want about this game and also if you haven't already done so please go to the youtube channel main page or click the subscribe button right down below and also give it a like if you like this video so if you want more please go to the pkhs ideas blogspot page at pkhsideas.blogspot.com i've included the link in the youtube channel main page and so therefore that being said thank you and i'll see you next time and we can go from the pen to the floor, from the windows to the wall.